In this video, we're going to be talking about the mean value theorem and how to show that a function satisfies the mean value theorem on a particular interval. So the function we've been given is the function f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 6x minus 5. And we've been asked to show that that function satisfies the mean value theorem on the interval negative 2 to 1. So what the mean value theorem tells us is that if a function is continuous and differentiable on an interval, then there must be a point inside of the interval where the tangent line to the function at that point is parallel to the tangent line that connects the endpoints of the interval. So that's a lot to think about, but it's actually pretty simple. So for example, we have the graph of the function we've been given. This is the graph of this function f of x is 3x squared plus 6x minus 5. That's this orange line here. So if we think about the endpoints of the interval, we've been given the interval negative 2 to 1. So here is negative 2 and here is 1. So these are the endpoints of the interval. If we start at these values and we go down until we meet the graph, we get this point here. Or if we go up until we meet the graph, we get this point right here. So if we connect those points with a line, then we have this straight line that connects the endpoints of the interval. The mean value theorem tells us that if this orange graph here, if this function, is continuous and differentiable between x equals negative 2 and x equals 1 over this interval here, then there has to be some point, and we call that point C, there has to be some point in between negative 2 and 1, so some point on this interval, where the tangent line to the graph at that point is parallel to this line right here that we already drew. So how are we going to find that point? Well, first of all, we always want to check to make sure that our function is both continuous and differentiable. If it isn't either of those things, then we can't use the mean value theorem. But in our case, we have a polynomial function. It's a simple quadratic function. And we know that all polynomial functions are both continuous and differentiable. So this one's really simple. And obviously, if you have a more complex function, you want to look for fractions where you can get the denominator to equal 0. That would be a point of discontinuity. You want to look for square roots where you can get the value underneath the square root to be negative. That would be a point of discontinuity. If you have a natural log function and you can make the argument inside the natural log function 0 or negative, that'll make the function undefined and discontinuous. So those would be points of discontinuity. Those would be points where the function is not differentiable. And if any of those points occurred in the interval that you had been given, then you know you wouldn't be able to apply the mean value theorem. But in this case, we've got a polynomial function. It is continuous. It is differentiable. There are no points of discontinuity and no points at which we can't differentiate the function between negative 2 and 1. Therefore, we know the mean value theorem applies. And the way that we find the point C, which is the point of tangency where that tangent line will be parallel to this line we've already drawn, is using this formula here. So we have f of b minus f of a is equal to f prime of c times quantity b minus a. So we're going to use that formula, and when we simplify it, we're going to get some value for x. We're going to end up with x equals something. Well, that x value is going to be the x value for the point of tangency that we're looking for. So let's just go through and find each of these things. So f of b right here, we have to keep in mind that the interval we've been given is the interval a comma b. So in our case, a is negative 2 and b is 1. Therefore, f of b is going to be f of 1. It's whatever we get when we plug 1 into our original function. So we're going to say f of b is equal to f of 1 is equal to whatever we get when we plug 1 into this right-hand side. So we're going to get 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 5. And that'll be equal to 3 plus 6, which is 9, minus 5, which is 4. Now we need to find f of a, and f of a is going to be f of negative 2, since a is negative 2, and that's whatever we get when we plug negative 2 into this right-hand side. So we'll get 3 times negative 2 squared plus 6 times negative 2 minus 5. So negative 2 squared is positive 4, times 3 is 12. We end up with 6 times a negative 2 is a negative 12, and minus 5, we end up with a negative 5. Now we need f prime of c. Well, c is going to be the x value for the point of tangency. We don't know what that is yet, but we can find f prime, the derivative of our original function f of x. So f prime of x, we're going to call the derivative of this right-hand side. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. The derivative of 6x is 6. The derivative of negative 5 is 0. So our derivative is 6x plus 6. That's what we want to plug in for f prime of c. 
So the derivative is 6x plus 6. f prime of c means plug c in for x. So we're just going to plug c in for x, and we're going to get 6c plus 6. That's the value we're going to plug in for f prime of c. And then we already know b and a. So if we plug everything we have into this formula, we get f of b, which we found to be 4, so 4, minus f of a. We know f of a is negative 5. So we get 4 minus a negative 5, which is the same as 4 plus 5. That's going to be equal to f prime of c, which we found was 6c plus 6. And we're multiplying that by b minus a, or 1 minus a negative 2, which is the same as 1 plus 2. When we simplify here, we're going to get 9 is equal to this 1 plus 2 becomes 3. If we distribute that across the 6c plus 6, we're going to get 18c plus 18. If we subtract 18 from both sides, we're going to get negative 9 equals 18c. Divide both sides by 18, and we're going to get c is equal to negative 1 half. So that means the value of c, or the value of x that we're interested in, is x equals negative 1 half. So we can call c this value right here. This is x equals negative 1 half. We'll call that c. And if we come down here until we meet the function, this point right here is going to be our point of tangency. And you can see that if we tried to draw a tangent line through this point, and my line won't be perfect, but you can see that it is roughly parallel to the line that we drew originally, and it is a tangent line only intersecting the graph at this one point. Now, how can we prove that this line is parallel to the original line and therefore prove the mean value theorem? Well, if we find the equation of both lines and we can see that their slopes are equal to one another, then we can show that the lines are parallel. So if we want to find the equation of this blue line here, first of all we know that this point is at negative 2 because the x value there is negative 2, and when we plugged negative 2 into the original function, we got a value of negative 5, so we know that that point is negative 2, negative 5. This point we know is at 1, and when we plugged 1 in we got 4, so we know that that's at 1, 4. So we can then use these two points to find the equation of the line. So if we plug those two points into the point-slope formula for the equation of a line, remember that formula is y minus y1 is equal to m, the slope, times x minus x1. So if we use the point 1, 4 as our point, we're going to get y minus 4 is equal to m times x minus 1. And then to find the slope, remember we subtract one y value from the other, so we'll say 4 minus a negative 5 is 4 plus 5, and we divide that by the difference in the x value, so we say 1 minus a negative 2, or 1 plus 2. Then we end up with y minus 4 is equal to 9 divided by 3, which is 3, times x minus 1, and if we simplify this, we'll get y minus 4 equals 3x minus 3. Adding 4 to both sides, we get y is equal to 3x plus 1. So we could say then that the equation of that line is y equals 3x plus 1. If we want to find the slope of the tangent line, what we can do is we can take this value of c and plug it into our derivative function, because remember the derivative models the slope of the tangent line. So since we're interested in the point c is equal to negative 1 half, we can say f prime of negative 1 half is going to be equal to 6 times negative 1 half plus 6, and we're going to get a negative 3 plus 6, which is a positive 3. So we already know that the lines are parallel because we found a slope of 3, and that's going to go in here for m. But if we wanted to find the equation of that line, all we would need to do is find the corresponding y value for this x value of negative 1 half. So in order to do that, we would just take this c equals negative 1 half, we would plug it into f of x. So we get f of negative 1 half is equal to 3 times negative 1 half squared. Well, negative 1 half squared is 1 fourth, so we'll get 3 times 1 fourth plus 6 times a negative 1 half. Well, that's going to be minus 3, and then we have a minus 5. So now when we simplify this, we're going to get 3 fourths minus 8. If we multiply this 8 by 4 over 4, we're going to get 32 over 4. And then 3 minus 32 gives us a negative 29, so we end up with a negative 29 over 4. Now we can plug in the values that we found. So we're going to say y minus y1, or y minus negative 29 fourths, so y plus 29 fourths is equal to 
m, we already found the slope was 3, multiplied by x minus x1. So x minus, and in this case, x1 is negative 1 half. So minus a negative 1 half is plus 1 half. When we simplify here, we're going to get y plus 29 fourths is equal to 3x plus 3 halves. If we subtract 29 fourths from both sides, we get y equals 3x plus 3 halves minus 29 fourths. If we find a common denominator, we multiply this fraction 3 halves by 2 over 2. We get 4 in the denominator. We get 6 in the numerator. 6 minus 29 gives us a negative 23. So then our equation is y equals 3x minus 23 over 4. And we can go ahead and write that in as the equation of this line here. y is equal to 3x minus 23 over 4. Now because both these equations have the same slope, they both have a slope of 3, we can say that they are parallel and there exists a point C, and in fact it's C equals negative 1 half, where the tangent line to the function is parallel to the line that connects the endpoints of the interval.